Hi, I'm Tim and I'm an osteopath and what we're going to do is have a very simple look at the spine. So here's a model of the spine here and we're just going to show you the three basic areas. So we start at the top, that's the base of the skull and this would be the back of the skull here and that's referred to as the occiput. And then we have the cervical spine and that has seven vertebrae and they are numbered one to seven. So C1, C2, C3 down to C7. Then we have the thoracic spine here which is also called the or known as the dorsal spine and this is labeled T1 or D1 down to T12 or D12. We then move down to the base of the spine which is the lumbar spine and that's labeled L1 to the base one which is L5. Below the lumbar spine we have the sacrum and on each side of the sacrum we have the ilia which form the iliac sacroiliac joints. So we're going to talk about the thoracic spine, dorsal spine, whatever you like to call it now. And as we said, there's 12 vertebrae and there are 12 discs. The primary shape of the thoracic spine is what we call a kyphosis. So that's where the convexity is to the back. This is the back of you, this is the front of you. So the convexity, as I say, is to the back and that forms a kyphosis. We often hear the term kyphosis used uh, medically to indicate a poor posture. Now, if the kyphosis is exaggerated, so we have a very exaggerated curve, then that would be called a medical kyphosis. Um, and that can be uh, brought on by uh, degenerative changes, uh, stress fractures with old age, with osteoporotic fractures, where we get an ang uh, uh, angular fracture and the spine will actually angle quite aggressively. Um, but for most people, that kyphosis is quite gentle and that acts to uh, oppose the two lordotic curves of the cervical spine and the lumbar spine. So the primary function of the thoracic spine, um, apart from protecting the spinal cord as it descends, uh, the length of the spine, is um, to form really a protective cage um, through the ribs. So we have 12 ribs and uh, most people believe their ribs are down here and they're quite right to think so, but actually uh, top ribs are high up here and they are actually attaching very high up on uh, the first thoracic vertebrae, T1 or D1, as we said. And these shape around it, so they're attaching at the posterior or the back of you, and they come round to the front. We have 12 ribs, as I said, and only 10 ribs actually come round the front and attach uh, here. And we have two ribs at the bottom, which are referred to as floating ribs. Strictly speaking, there is occasionally, you, it's found, uh, there's something called a cervical rib, which uh, is often not bony, it's more cartilaginous, but there is sometimes an extra rib, but that's not normally spoken about or found, it's very rare. Um, so the attachment, as I said, of the uh, ribs is at the back here, and then it comes round to the front to form what is called the thoracic cage, and that uh, consists of the sternum at the front here, which is here, which is your breastbone. And the ribs are attaching on here, and then forming a very protective cage for your internal organs heart, lungs, pancreas, liver, kidneys, etc. And that's the primary function of the thoracic spine. It has limited movement compared to the cervical and lumbar spine, purely because of the restriction formed by the ribs. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video and found the content useful. And if you did, why not share it?